How's it going everyone? This is Mind Blank. welcome back to my channel and I'm sorry if my voice is a little stuffy still, I've been absolutely knocked out by a cold for the past week and a half. But anyway, you guys know I don't exactly get onto hype trains and I'm not going to for this video, I just want to share some speculation mixed in with facts and a little bit of wishful thinking on what Ryzen 2nd generation clocks are going to look like. So during CES, AMD had a snippet of info regarding Pinnacle Ridge, Zen Plus or whatever you want to call it. Not a lot of new stuff here and they definitely had no mention of clock speeds, something that is really hotly debated when it comes to Ryzen processors. This slide runs a few headlines on what Ryzen 2nd Gen will be about, like the new 12 nanometer Global Foundries process, the presence of Precision Boost 2.0 and its availability in April of this year. No, I didn't miss the most important stuff here, higher clocks, it's clearly stated right there, but at the same time it's kinda ambiguous and I'm going to explain why in a second. For this I'm going to split to two separate points of view, that of a regular enthusiast, bear with me on the nomenclature for a second here, and one for the hot-blooded enthusiast. So the first group will refer to perceived performance, while the second to absolute performance. Things will get clearer, trust me. I can't really call people that are running Ryzen 5s and 7s as anything other than enthusiasts, but I have to differentiate them from the people pushing boundaries by running high overclocks on their CPUs, their RAM, fiddling with timings, etc. Right, so 12 nanometer Global Foundries process. Let's take a look at these two slides and see what it brings new from the current 40 nanometer LPP. I'm just going to focus on two things right now, 15% improved circuit density and upwards of 10% performance boost. Performance boost here kinda directly refers to higher clocks since architecture specific performance is not something that Global Foundries directly controls, obviously. Great, so we're looking at around 10% higher clocks. If we take the 1800X which is the top performer and the highest clocking chip at a maximum clock of 4.1 GHz, we should be looking at around 400 MHz extra which would mean a 4.5 GHz clocking chip. So to answer the question in the video title I think 4.5 GHz will be the highest golden chips can achieve, much like 4.3 GHz is doable on some very cherry picked Threadripper processors with rather 4.4 GHz being the new 4.1 GHz we're getting now on 1st gen. But wait, there's more and this is where the two points of view that I talked about earlier come into play, so let's talk about the perceived performance group first. These consumers that will move from a 1st gen 1800X to a 2nd gen equivalent, remember these are the regular enthusiasts not interested in overclocking stuff at this point in time at least, will get more than a 2, 3, 400 MHz incremental upgrade in clocks if they switch, here's why. Precision Boost 2 comes into play and what it brings new is an improved clock to load thermal curve and this allows the CPUs to run higher clocks than they did before. Despite this I think flat out on all cores we're not going to see more than around 200 MHz extra, but we'll see higher clocks and scenarios that don't use all 16 threads to their full, like gaming for example. If Precision Boost 2 does it right, we could see 4.2 or maybe even 4.3 GHz during some tasks. While it doesn't seem much, I'm the type of guy that thinks that small things add up and eventually turn into bigger things. And this is why for the perceived performance group we could already be looking at a more substantial increase in performance than the hot-blooded enthusiasts will see, which are already pushing 4.1 GHz out of their 1800Xs. So is this it? Well, no, actually AMD also talked about reducing latencies for the cache, the IMC and hopefully the CCX interconnect. This will translate into improved performance for both my study groups, but nothing's been divulged here. This will mean though increased single threaded performance, so IPC, just don't expect anything more than a few percent. One thing that is clear to me without AMD even as much as alluding to it is improved memory compatibility and speeds. This is one point they've worked on pretty hard for the last year and they've made quantifiable improvements, but they will step it up with an improved IMC for Ryzen 2nd gen. 
Now, this has an impact for both enthusiast groups, but I think that, again, the perceived performance group will benefit the most and the reason is quite simple. Some people are still stuck with their Hynix and Micron based RAM at 2666 or 2933 MHz and I'm quite hopeful that speeds like 3200 will be much easier to obtain even with tighter timings. For the people that are already pushing their RAM to 3200 plus and running very low latency timings as a bonus, I think that upwards of 3600 will be easier to obtain, but don't expect something like 4000 as easy to reach or even at all. But certainly, going from 2666, for example, to 3200 plus will yield a higher performance gain than 3200 plus to 3600 or above. If you don't believe this, just check out any of my Ryzen RAM videos to see the diminishing returns in action. What I'm trying to get to here is that this will open the door to easily accessible performance gains, whereas today it's pretty much closed for some people unless they actually go out and switch their RAM modules. So the idea for the perceived performance group is that for someone switching from their 1800X, for example, to the second gen equivalent, the performance uplift might very well be pretty substantial. And this is without touching anything else, meaning overclocking. To recap why, Precision Boost 2 hopefully boosting above the 3400 MHz expected increase from the node shrink, cache and latency improvements leading to higher IPC, and the ability to have higher frequency RAM with much less hassle. And that's not all, for gaming specific loads going from a 3.7 GHz 1800X and 2666 MHz RAM to 4.3 GHz 3200 RAM for example is much more visible than jumping from your current highly clocked 4.1 GHz same 1800X and 3200 RAM to a 4.4 GHz second gen 1800X with 3600 RAM let's say. This is not to say that for the hot-blooded enthusiasts it's not exciting at all. It will be interesting as well since they get to play with higher frequencies on the CPU and RAM side, but the jump in performance they'll feel will be less than our other guys will. Now, it's not like these people have less incentive to upgrade since they're the kind that will adopt new technology regardless of what it means, but AMD has everybody covered with second gen in my opinion. And this is a good thing since the most important group was the perceived performance one in the first place. This might only be an incremental upgrade and it certainly will be so, but I'm pretty sure that if tested under real world conditions and usage scenarios, second gen will be very interesting indeed. It's also interesting to see if the prices for these CPUs will hover around the current first gen ones since Intel's not caught with its pants off this time, we've got Coffee Lake chips on the market. Guess we'll find out in 3 months, but until that time let me know what you think are going to be realistic expectations as far as clocks go for Zen Plus in the comments down below. While you're at it, check out the description for links to my Twitter, my Instagram and my Patreon if you want to become a mind blank tech backer. Thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing and see you next time everybody, bye bye.